Baton Rouge representing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ready? Oh, what's up, man? I'm Nussie. Dope Celebrity Records. Baton Rouge representing. Mr. Really be doing them things. Up five nothing. All the rumors you heard is true. All the rumors you heard. Okay, so how about we, uh, let's get to Nussie Badass. Nussie what's up? Badass. And Boosie Badass, what's, what's, what's the deal with that? Well, to be honest with you, Nissy Badass really was just like a joke. So um, I jumped in the car with one of my partners, and um, they was making fun of me because mm -hmm. I had wanted to start rapping. Mm -hmm. And he like, what's up, Nissy Badass? And when he said it, everybody fell out laughing. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what? I'm doing it. So that's how Nissy Badass came about. My partner Pete, we cracking a joke about it. You know, it, was, it wasn't nothing to try to offend nobody or nothing like right. that or to come up. It was like I had did it. Because I had wanted to, I always think about marketing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I thought it would be an easy way to catch people ear, and it worked. It did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did it. I took Boosie album cover, took him off, put me on it, and I did it. But once you listen to the album, I had no diss. It wasn't a diss record. It just was something to, I wanted to just be different, be exclusive, you know? A lot of people took it the wrong way. A lot of people understood what I was doing, and they commended me for it. And um, the music spoke for itself. Okay, so going into that, what, what, separates, what separates you from... The boosies and the, you um, know, the, the foxes and yeah, well, I just I'm a I'm a, I'm a myself. I'm just a street nigga trying to convince you I can rap. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the streets really vouch for me. They really support me. Mm -hmm. I, I did everything really like the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. I got out in the streets and my grind and I promoted myself. You know, mm -hmm. see, I'm the CEO and the artist. I ain't got no stepdaddies with this shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I jumped in the game, I just did it. And um, I started rapping off rumors. Mm -hmm. I always talk about what people shoot you about. Mm -hmm. I be like. The only person who will really see it, they'll be shoe showing. So I see it out loud, right. you know. And um, everybody liked it. I liked doing it. And I just kept pushing. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much let the streets tell me what to do, you know. I just put the, I make my material easy for people to get. And once people hearing it, they like it, you know. So who, who, are, who, are, who are some of your influence? Who are some of your, some of the people that just made you decide? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this and do it. Um, way. rapping. Um, influenced me to rap. I'm a fan of rap music. I just, I like, I listen to all kinds of music just besides rap. Mm -hmm. I just, I did it because I know how, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in the streets, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm really caught up in the streets and I want, I, like I said, I'm a thinker. I always mm -hmm. think a lot. And a couple of dudes got killed and it was like, my name came up. And I said, well, I know how I can address him. I was in the studio one day with one of my partners and um, I said, let me say something on this motherfucker, you know. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say something to address the issue mm -hmm. and I did it. Mm -hmm. and, it and, and I just playing with the mics really mm -hmm. influenced me to start rapping. But my point got across, you know. Right. And um, basically I didn't do it, but ain't nobody believed me. Mm -hmm. But later on down the line, a couple months later, they found out I didn't do it. Ain't nobody apologized to me for it, so I'm mad now. So I'm like... Let's get it on, you know. When you say they never apologized to you, who? No, no one. Just, just the streets. Ain't nobody said, well, damn, this is, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people's words, they, they say a lot of things, but their actions show differently. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I had a car wash in South Baton Rouge. Somebody mm -hmm. was throwing bombs at it, trying to set it on fire. Mm -hmm. Somebody passed by one of my houses and shot at it. Mm -hmm. So, your action, but on the streets, I'm not hearing nobody got no beef in me. Don't nobody want to do nothing with me. But your action showing when you're doing little sneaky shit. You see what I'm saying? So I started rapping, let niggas know I ain't do it. But if you don't believe me, sell it up. Let's let's just do it. You know, mm -hmm. that's just the attitude I feel about anything. You know, not just that situation. So I did that. My past life been a big grimy. So anytime I say something towards anybody, they are gonna blow it up. Right. Cause everybody expecting to see some gun play or some fighting or something like that. You know. But I'm beyond that. You know, I, all my partners they did. You know, and I'm like one of the last real niggas left. That's how I feel. And when somebody on the streets acting like they real, and you fake, it feel like I'm, I feel insulted. I take that shit kind of personal, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just kept on rapping. It's a movement now. Everybody like what I'm saying. They're not just, it, it ain't because, I didn't want people to accept me because they were scared of me. I want you to accept me because my music was really good, mm -hmm. you know? So now I'm getting ready to play. I'm in the clubs, my CD's selling off the shelf. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I done been through a lot with the music, you know, and people, I'm actually making money off rap where I can really pay my bills now. So things like that let me know I'm doing my job, you know, but as for the Boosie incident, the so-called beef with me and Lil Boosie, I ain't got no beef with um, Boosie because I talked to him. I talked to him maybe five, four and a half, five months ago at the airport. I flew in from Mexico. I got a call that he was getting off the airplane. He was on his way to Baton Rouge because I knew somebody on the plane. 
I said, damn, this is a perfect time about to go catch the little nigga while he by himself. Right. Where I ain't no entourage, it's just me and you, you know. Now, he wasn't acting like no pussy or nothing. You know, he stood up like a man, he talked to me, told me that he ain't never crossed me, he ain't had nothing against me. He told me to look up to me in the streets. And I told him, well, my feelings were hurt because mm -hmm. I, nigga told me, yanked my sign down, which was petty, but it was big to me because I feel like we know each other and I just talked to you. And for you to do that, it's like you shitting on my dream, bro. Right. You know? So um, he told me he didn't do it. I told him, well, shit, ain't no, ain't no beef. You know, it's just like I say, when I say things about people on songs, people gonna blow it up because they think it's gonna be, you know, we just don't know I'm entertaining my listeners. And I talk about anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. I could be with my boy, ain't one, he make me mad, I might jot a little line about his ass. You might see us later on. Right. So make a long story short, people done caught on to it. Ain't nobody really nothing tripping. Personal. No, it ain't nothing personal. You know, like I say, I, I, I told him, I said, man, I'd be less than a man to do you something behind some he saying, she said, when I can just come approach you. Mm -hmm. Because you, we know each other. You know, I know you and you know me. You know what I'm saying? I see this rap shit and this street shit, two different things, bro. And I could have started like a whole little Tupac and Bigger war with. I could have been fucked them niggas and had all my niggas who followed me beefing with them. And he could have did the same as well. And I feel like it wasn't yeah, worth it. Good. It wasn't worth for me to hurt, hurt nobody behind no stupid shit, you know. If my feelings get hurt, I'm, I'm expressing myself. And that's just one of the things I'm going to always do. You know, I ain't got no picks and chills, you know. So, so. how long you been rapping? I've been rapping going on about two and a half, I think maybe probably about three years now. Hold on, hold I think on, I started like 96, 96, about, about two and a half years now. Hold on, hold on. So, um, outside of outside of the rap game, is there anything you out anything else that you feel that you want to dip your hands into, or do or do you want to, you know, stay in that one castle? Nah, well, I'm doing all kind of stuff right now in the streets. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um. I just, I'm doing anything, anything that's going to feed my crew, anything that's going to help my people, my community, because mm -hmm. I like giving, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I always have been doing that, you know, mm -hmm. um, just on the streets, period, you know, because I feel like I keep it reality real. Mm -hmm. See, my fans can believe me. Right. We're on 31st Street, the street I always rap about. Right. We're under construction right now. I got people fixing on the building. It's really a place for anybody to come holler at this or didn't come holler at me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm visible, you know, so... um. Dip my hands and I'm, I'm into just networking and establishing relationships with real people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't play that hood shit. I got niggas in this neighborhood right here came come around me. Mm -hmm. You know, but real people, you real, I don't give a fuck if you from Tokyo, you can come holler at me. You know? Mm -hmm. And shit, that, that's basically it though. Um, I done did a couple movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I dropped a few mixtapes. I'm doing everything out my own pocket, independent. I can't complain how it's going. I see uh, the shirt. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna go ahead and. Y'all plan on launching the line? Yeah, Dope Celebrity Records, DCF. Um, whatever they want to do. I mean, whatever the streets want, I'm doing it. You know, if I can't think of a reason why not to do it, I'm doing it. You know, I focus on the kids a lot, though. You know, I'm, I'm going to the um, high schools. I do the prep rallies with DJ Frank. Mm -hmm. And we just try to recondition everybody. You know, it's like I done been through so much shit, I can't tell somebody something. Like, they will listen to me. You know what I'm saying? Because it is what it is. So, 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 Baton Rouge has its own Sound. almost language, yeah. Yeah. And you, yeah. you got your words. You got ratchet. You yeah. know, you got the dumb way. So, so tell, tell us, tell us about Baton Rouge itself. Dumb, yeah. dickless, hood, dickless. We real creative, bro. We just don't got no unity like we supposed to have. Mm. You know, cause um, soon somebody get in a better position, they like pretty much. You basically, you having money is normal. Right. You not having money, that ain't normal. And that's what I show. You know what I'm saying? If you said Nussie 10 years ago, nigga know who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I wasn't rapping. But if you said Nussie, somebody knew who I was because I always was out there. Mm -hmm. So me having money and doing things was, is, 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 is strange to everybody. Mm -hmm. Baton Rouge, bro, we, it's just, it's, it's just, everybody been here so long, I come up with my own street slangs. You know, like, for example, it's easy to translate a street slang or a sand because, like I just said, when I jumped in the car, my partner say, what's up, Nissy badass? And once right. everybody laughed at it, it started. Right. That's how shit start. So tell you know? us about Ratchet. What is, what is, what is Ratchet? Ratchet, um, the real Ratchet is like a slime ball. That ain't really nothing good. Right. But we can take it and, and make it positive. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, a, um, it's really, it's really some slime ball ass shit. It's like, nigga do whatever. Like, it's really like cut though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I, I, like I'm going to use the word bell pepper. I call funny shaped people bell peppers, mm -hmm. you know. Right. But I made it good. 
It's like when I'm singing a song, Bell Pepper, I'm calling you a Bell Pepper. You ain't insulted. Right. You know, you, you yeah, you know, I'm making you feel good to be who you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just because you got a funny shape. So what? It's not a fat person. Right. You know, just anything shaped like a Bell Pepper, you right. know? And we just trend set. There's a lot of things I can't really hardly explain how I want, mm -hmm. but I can you know, let you try to see where I'm trying to get with it, you know? So, right, what was your first album to drop? Um, The Streets Can Vouch for Me. Okay, and from that album, how, how many, how much, how much fame did you get from that? You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, the album, I, I, the album did real good. When I, when I did The Streets Can Vouch for Me, I didn't know the business. You know, I didn't know how to get out and it, it, all, everything was happening to me so fast, man, you know, because it was the, street, the Streets Can Vouch for Me was like a really messy um, mixtape. It was like I was ready to go to war with anybody because they had, like I said, a couple people got killed. My name came up. I didn't do it, but them dudes partners thinking I did. So what could I tell them dudes? I'm like, well, look, bro, I ain't do it. You don't believe me? Fuck you. I'll be on 31st Street, let's do whatever you want to do, you know. And then around that time, the feds hit, and they had an operation called Operation Snake Eyes, and they picked up a couple guys, two new, a couple more niggas, you know, and I started rapping about it. But I was really basically saying, Tell, teach, trying to teach a nigga a lesson, you know, to be careful, they out here. And um, I try to make you laugh in my rhymes. I keep it street. I got like scary, funny lyrics. You know, I can tell you some shit that's gonna be funny, but it'll get you killed. And to me, that was exclusive, you know. So once I start doing it, everybody say, man, we gotta get that Nissan CD, cause that nigga talking about such and such them. Right. Now these some niggas who I'm talking about can hurt you or get you killed out here in these streets. Right. But they understand what I'm saying. I'm not making fun of you, brother. I'm letting motherfuckers see, don't make the same mistakes they did, right. you know, and make your niggas penitentiary rich, you know. Everybody always hollering about our problems, but don't nobody want to tell us the solutions. I say one of the solutions is to just make your niggas penitentiary rich, meaning send the boys some money, send your people some money when they go to jail, help their family. If I'm in jail and I can't get out and you sending me money, it ain't that bad, you know. But that's another story, but you see where I'm going with that too. And what was the second album after that? Um, um, street credibility. Streets can vouch for me. Um, um, sneak attack. Um, Nussy Badass, huh? Dope Celebrity Records Volume One. Nussy and Diablo. Dope Celebrity Records Volume Two. The Good Bad Guy. The Good Bad Guy. Pyrex Radio Exclusive. Um, the Champ is here. Um, I got one coming soon called Hood Dickless. I just dropped a mixtape about a month ago called Nussy featuring Nussy. Um. A lot of my mixtape, I try to bring Baton Rouge artists with me. Like when you hear my new mixtape I just dropped last month, I got 22 different artists on now. See, I'm trying to let everybody ride off my coattail. Like, everybody buying my disc, but once you get my disc, you hear other artists on there who might don't have, they might be better than me lyrically, but that's, well, I don't think they are myself, because I done got good with this shit, but they are good. A lot of cats just don't have the drive I have, you know. I that's actually, somebody pushing them. That's right, that's right. And um, I, I, I just got a different drive, you know. I, I go in bands behind this music shit, you know. I spend money, all this based on the music thing, you know. This is a place where 50, 60, 70, 80 people can come to and network and trade tracks, sell tracks or whatever they want to do. You know, you can come, you can throw your party here. I ain't got no problem. Even though I paid for it myself, I am not, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be here for you to do nothing. Just holler at anyone. And he gonna take care of you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we the people, you know, we the streets, you know? I mean, you can't stop it. I mean, the, the streets is pushing our music now, you know? Um, my song is on the radio, y'all. They playing my music. Oh, uh, I got, um, They Hate My. They Hate My is one of the songs, but I didn't did so many songs. I did, I did the game like Lil Wayne did, the industry. He did songs with everybody. Mm -hmm. So when I came out to the streets, everybody was like, man, your songs is kind of, Man, you, you, they, they were scared to play my music because it was kind of messy and people get violent when they hear it and it's, you know, right. ain't nobody want to see, uh, people didn't really, a lot of people didn't know me, my reputation to reach you for, my music do. And a lot of people just be on like, man, I don't want to fuck with this because them niggas going to be, because they don't know me. Right. But when they meet me, it's a different thing, you know, so I had to recondition everybody and let them know that, man, I'm strictly fucking with this music, but I ain't trying to start no mess. I'm not trying to bully you into playing my music. I'm doing song, okay, y'all ain't gonna play my song, okay, fuck it, I'm finna If you're 10 years old, I'm doing a song with you. I'm doing birthday party for kids, I'm paying for it out of my own pocket, you know? So, I earned my respect, I paid dues. People tried not to feel me, they tried to brush me off, I didn't let it get to me, I kept pushing. 
you know, because you got to pay dues at everything you do, you know. So by me going through a lot, I understood it, you know. And I just kept on pushing, I kept on working. And people see I'm a hard worker with the music shit now, and when my phone rings, somebody got money, you know, or they, or they got a situation, you know. And it is what it is. I just like to let my... My actions speak louder than my words, you know. So you gonna leave the rapping alone, go to uh, acting now? Or you uh, tell us about the movies and stuff. Oh man, um, that's why. I, well, I ain't gonna stop rapping. Um, I got the movie roles with because of the rapping, you know. When, when the when the guys came hollering at me with the with the movie, they like, man, we had to come meet you, bro, cause every everybody we interviewing is giving you a shout out. We like, who the fuck is Nussie? Mm -hmm. You know. So they came on Thirty First Street and shit. I was right here. I gave interviews just like I'm doing for y'all. They liked it. Called me later on that night, said, man, we got a movie we doing. You know, they really was interviewing me with the music thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, they told me I got the role if I wanted, but just still come audition for it, you know. So I went, did it, hit it off good. I did something with DMX, Lou Diamond Phillips, um, mm -hmm. um, Death Toll. It's in Blockbuster, it went nationwide. They did like 100,000 copies the first week, which was good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, did my first time acting, I did another one called Hood Hostages. I did like three or four more, three, one, two, three. I did like four movies after that. I don't know the name of them, though. They're not out yet. Um, I did something with, um, I think, Deborah Cox. Yeah, Deborah Cox was in there. Yeah, Good Man, Hard to Find, that's the name of that one. And um, a couple guys from Soul Food. Um, one move I did was funny because I, I did a scene when I was robbing the store mm. in South Baton Rouge on Government Street. And a lot of people don't know, when I was younger, when I was little, somebody actually robbed that store while I was in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that shit, that was kind of funny right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a store robbing a store without actually, you know, so everything be destined to happen. You know what I'm saying? So what type of roles, what type of roles are you going to be interested in, in in the future? With the movies? Yeah. Um, they just been, they don't really matter to me, mm -hmm. but the movie roles that I happen to play, it's been movies that they think based on my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, all the movies I just had, everybody like being the bad guy, I guess, I you know. Guess, yeah. You know what I'm saying, like old dog. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all my movie roles have been with the type of lyrics and shit I spit on, this, on the streets. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't take the past away, So can, away, you, know can you see saying? yourself crossing that line and playing a cop or, or a detective? Yeah, it's a, yeah, I do that. It's a movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's a movie, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about all that shit there. You know, but I ain't gonna, um, only role I wouldn't play would be like a homosexual, like kissing a man or something like that. I'd never do that. I don't give a fuck how much pain. I ain't doing it. Yeah. All right, what about, uh, what, what, what can we expect from you in the future? Man, you can expect the whole movement going on, bro. But what I'm trying to do now is um, just, just, just push the artist and just stay consistent, you know. Um, you can expect number of success from me, bro. You know, I've always been a go-getter. I've always been a hustler. They got some guys out here, producers, or up-and-coming people. Yeah. you want to... Yeah, um, Savage, he was Trill Entertainment, um, Be Real as well, um, Beat Flipper, um, Gus from Bottom Line, um, who I'm missing one? Um, Wolf, um, man, the list go on, man. I, see, I fuck with so many people, I don't care. I, I, if you, if you, if you willing to work, I don't like no liabilities. I don't like nobody who when I call, I need to, to, to come to a show or, or be there. You high, you full of drugs and all, you can't come see. One thing a lot of niggas, you might hear my rhymes, but niggas don't know. Listen, I, I ain't got nothing against nobody else, what they do, but I ain't never smoked weed a day in my life. I ain't never smoked cigarettes. I don't get high. So when I be knowing what the fuck I'm doing when I'm doing it, you know. Um, that's just me, you know. But if, if you're going to work with me and all this with this music thing, you got to just have a level head, man, and be there. You know, on time to, and, and be there, cause this isn't turned. It's turned serious now. It ain't no. It ain't no game. You know, mm -hmm. we actually making progress. We actually making money with it. You know what I'm saying? And be about what you talking, bro. If you about that violent shit or whatever, you know, rap, rap. But try to have style with it. Try to learn from me. You know what I'm saying? Cause you don't want to make a bad decision with a good intention. You out here talking this shit, and niggas see you and test your ass, and you fold up like a little bitch. You know, I be everywhere. You know, and I keep it with me. Believe that. So I got, a, I got a question for you, for the ladies. Um, with all this that you're doing, you know, do 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 does Nissy have time for anything outside of rap? Does Nissy have time? For, oh yeah. For the ladies. For the yeah, ladies. yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm 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 good, man. I mean, I'm just riding the wave right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where wherever it's taking me, and I can't see no reason why not to go. I'm doing it. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm always gonna have time, you know, for for for. They got. I, say, I'm, I got. I live by a code. I got morals in life, you know. Mm -hmm. I just sometimes say these days it can be real frustrating because ain't no fun in the hood no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, with the snitching and all that type of shit going on, you know. But basically, what I'm saying is nowadays keeping it real will get you a foot in your ass, mm -hmm. you know. But you still got to do it. I still got to do it. You know, this is how I was raised, you know what I'm saying? While we on this real shit, what you want to tell the real street niggas out there, like, on some... On some real life. street shit, bro, on some real life shit, bro. Um, don't keep, keep in touch with the penitentiaries, bro. Because any given time, man, your life will change, bro. Don't sleep on them niggas in the pen, bro. Send them dudes some money, man. I promise you, if everybody do that, it'll stop down, it'll, it'll pipe down on a lot of this bullshit we going through. That play a major role, bro. I'm gonna set you an example right quick. If me and you cool, and you a dude, and you get busted with my dope, I mean, it's mine. But you got caught with it. So you, you're not supposed to tell on me. You're supposed to go to jail and shut your mouth. I'm supposed to take care of your family. I'm supposed to send some money. I'm supposed to do all those things. I'm not supposed to go fuck your old lady and throw you to the wolves. Because then what's gonna happen? You might tell on me for revenge. And you don't justify what no red ass nigga do because I don't give a fuck. Nicky Barnes just showed you that. Have morals and codes about yourself. Set yourself standards. Don't make a bad decision with a good intention. If this guy play basketball real good and I wanna help this brother, I'm not gonna give him no dope. I'm gonna encourage him and give him money and help him through school and just stay positive, stay away from these streets. I'm not going to give him no kilos of dope or nothing like that trying to help him. Because if he get caught up, he never been through nothing. He might tell on me. You see what I'm saying? So you got to sit yourself down, bro. Keep people around you who love you for real. Don't neglect the people who you know love you for real. I don't give a fuck about the hard times. I'd rather go through hard times with all my friends and we'll come up together. You know what I'm saying? And try to help somebody else make some money. That's what real niggas do. You know, you pass the torch, you keep it going. You know? And that's it. So is there anything we didn't cover that you want to cover? Mm. Shit, just be looking out for DCF, man. We coming, bro. Believe that. How many artists y'all got in your camp? Oh, shit. <laughs> I ain't lying, bro. Oh, Lord. I ain't never sit down and count them motherfuckers. It's, so it's, 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 it's nobody. Really, 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 I'm focusing right now on, on Delwin the Crazy Man. Delwin. Oh, King Fancy, Big Fancy, Ridiculous Balling. He just did seven and a half years in the penitentiary. When I be on the dumb way, when I be saying penitentiary, rich, big, fancy, coming soon, he home now. He been out going on five months. That's how I know when I caught Booster in the airport, because when he came home, he was with me. He sat in the car, so I know approximately how long it been since I, you know. Um, he got like seven songs out already in the streets. You know, King Fancy, Delvin got the song Mobbing. You know, um, we got Lil J, we got Pup, we got a few more artists. But the thing is, we just really hustling right now, you know. Are we independent? And I don't really know all the tricks and trades about the rap music, so I don't want to feed nobody no dream and be doing stuff with them. You know, I got to get in this dough all the way. You know, I'm, I'm steady making progress, but as, as for anybody, like, um, reaching out to us to help us or give us some advice, ain't none of that happened. You know, I had to learn everything myself, you know, and I'm not mad at nobody or nothing because I'm, I'm doing my thing without all the other elements. But if I did have them elements, you'll see how shit would be going. You know, I got newspaper clippings from New York, you know, talking about me, you know. I got BDS spins when I pull my spins in Dallas and Savannah, Georgia and Tennessee, they're places I've never been, you know. So things like that me is, is telling me that it's working, you know. And it's just a matter of time, bro, you know. The thing, what I'm trying to do really, bro, if I do is to get a record deal, I would try to get a label deal so I can really push others. The artists, you know, and other people, you know, because I got me, I'm fine, you know. I feel like I'm rich in these streets, you know. That is how I feel. I got house, I got rent houses, you know, I got a couple vehicles. I'm good, you know what I'm saying? But it just really make me feel good if I can help somebody else, like, um, you know, good, bro. All right, shout out. Man, shout out to the whole Baton Rouge, man, and everybody who loving and supporting us in DCF family. Right. What's up? What's up? Big up to. What is it? What is it? Boss Magazine. And, Boss um, Magazine. Run with it. Boss Magazine and Run with it promotion. Run with it promotion. All right.
Shout out, big up to Boss Magazine, run with the promotions. You chilling with your boy Nissa on 31st Street. Boom, my yay. Yeah. Nothing up now? Yeah, it don't matter. Boss Magazine, shout out promotion. I mean, run with the promotions? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Big, big ups and respect to Boss Magazine, run with the promotion. I'm telling you, it's real out here, man. Lead that. Boom, my yay. Yeah. Hey. Don't forget about Roxy. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm, What's up, man? Nussie, Boomer, yay, yeah, Mr. Really be doing them things. The champ is here. Here with my girl Roxy. Balls Magazine. Run with it. Run with it. Hey, you look like a cover girl.